Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne, and this is Tolu Johnson. Uh, we're going to do a uh, commandment of Jesus called Follow Jesus. Um, what's different about this is that uh, Jesus is going to speak through me. I'm a prophet, and Jesus is going to teach his commandments, and he's going to teach it according to six or seven questions Tolu has made uh, for the commandment uh, to get uh, some information out of Jesus. Uh, so um, we'll just uh, allow uh, Jesus is here and he says hello to Lou and uh, and uh, and uh, we'll allow uh, her to say the title of the commandment um, and read a scripture verse and start with the first question. Thank you, Jesus. So it's commandment four and it says follow Jesus. And the Bible verse is Mark 1 verse 17. Then Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. That's the verse. Okay. So my, let's, so let's my, start with the first question. So my first question is, what does it mean to follow you? And how can one practically do so in their daily life? Okay, so there's a number of things. Uh, first of all, um, uh, I've said... In Matthew 7, uh, anyone who hears these sayings of mine and, and does them, he'll be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. So when the storms came and beat upon the house, the house stood because it founded upon that rock. That rock is the teachings of mine. Uh, it says in that verse, uh, anyone who does these sayings of mine, these sayings of mine, uh, can uh, be understood as my 50 commandments that we're covering in this book and my 54 parables that can be explained in the book of uh, Matthew's, the parables of Jesus made simple. Uh, so um, uh, if you uh, put into practice those uh, 50 commandments uh, in your daily life and you put uh, the 54 parables in the practice in your daily life, and uh, you uh, constantly uh, take every thought captive uh, according to what I taught and according to what uh, the apostles taught in the epistles, um, then uh, you'll be obeying me and you'll be following me. So how do you take every thought captive? Well, someone hurts you at work, causes you trouble at work, your first uh, inclination is not to forgive them, uh, but to go into the lunchroom and tell everyone what a jerk that person was and how no one should be their friend because they're such a jerk. Um, but my commandments say, turn the other cheek. My commandments say, forgive uh, those who hurt you uh, seven times, 70 times. My commandment says, pray for your enemy. My commandment says, bless your enemy. My commandment says, if someone hurts you, go and approach them and tell them what they did. So there's five things I told you to do. And there's one thing Satan's telling you to do is go and gossip. Uh, so taking every thought captive is getting that thought and deciding to do what I told you to do over what's your natural inclination to do. If someone asks you uh, to help them move house or help them uh, look after their children because they're going out on a date night, um, uh, going the extra mile, which is one of my commandments, is um, if, if they ask you to move, you can say, I can come over uh, in the week before and help you pack boxes and uh, I can help you to move. And then when you're unpacking the boxes on the other side, I can come and help you uh, unpack the boxes and put things away. That's going the extra mile. Uh, your thought uh, may be when someone asks you uh, to help them move house, um, your, your thought may be not that again, not another person asked me a favor. Um, you take that thought captive by um, by uh, the commandment, uh, uh, go the extra mile, and the go the extra mile commandment makes you do the extra things. Uh, if someone asks you to look after their children so they can go on a date night, 
um, you can uh, tell them that uh, you you not only uh, look after the kids, uh, but uh, you look after the kids once a month so they can continue to do that. That's going the extra mile. And once you know uh, the 50 commandments of mine and you know uh, the parables of mine, you understand them and how to implement them, you'll find that many of your thoughts uh, start to get changed and you'll take the thought uh, captive, you'll grab the thought and you'll apply scripture to it and do what the scripture says. Uh, another way to uh, follow me uh, is uh, for you uh, to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uh, give you directions in your day and tell you what to do. And uh, that's a specific skill set. And in the next year, uh, Matthew will be writing a book, how to, how to hear the Holy Spirit, uh, how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And you can look out uh, for that book. Thank you, Jesus. Just to add to the illustration you just made now, I had an incident today where we were doing the God interview in the morning and there was a parcel at the door. So I had to quickly tell the person to leave the parcel at the door that when we finish, I'll come and take it. But when I took the parcel, it wasn't my parcel. I, I thought it was my parcel, but later on, I noticed that for somebody that took the my address a few weeks ago and then used the address again to post something without telling me. So immediately I was furious within me. I wanted to call the person and say, why did you do that? Why didn't you inform? But immediately I was like, love your neighbor. I just felt like you've just finished an interview now about loving people. So instead of being hungry at the person, just explain they can inform you next time when they're posting something to your address. So just to explain about taking thought captive because my flesh wanted to do something different, but I had to say, no, that's not the way to behave as a Christian. You need to just love the person and just explain to the person how you want them to do it when that happens again in the future. Yeah, so. it's amazing. It's amazing how your life will be transformed when you understand uh, the actions of love. Uh, the 50 commandments, uh, are commandments, but you may be scared by commands, but it's uh, they make up the gospel of love. I I brought the gospel of how to love other people, and uh, it truly really is better. You you may think you know better. You may think you're the boss. You may think I'm stupid, and and my ways are a waste of time or harder. But my ways are really better, and it leads more people uh, into the kingdom of God. And I totally agree because it's changing my life. It's transforming my life. And I hope it does for other people as well that are watching this channel. So the second question is, how can someone know if they are truly following you? Well, uh, there's a, a number of ways. Uh, there's uh, the peace of God. Uh, can reign with a person. A person uh, can be in peace and uh, living uh, a lifestyle of peace. Uh, the presence of God uh, can uh, be upon a person and uh, they can uh, travel in the presence of God. Matthew doesn't really realize, uh, you know, if, if there are things that uh, are common to every Christian because he's not every Christian, um, but um, he travels mostly with the peace of God and Satan attacks him from time to time to get him out of the peace. But most of the time he's traveling in the peace. And most days the presence of God is with Matthew, but there's different rewards besides that. But I'm sure everyone would like to have the peace of God um, and uh, have the presence of God and not be worrying all the time. Um, there's also uh, like uh, open communication between Matthew and me. Um, Matthew lies in his bed and does like a debrief with me each day. And I constantly tell him how proud I am of him and how happy I am with him. And we talk over things so I can uh, give him feedback. Um, other People can give you commentary and thank you uh, for certain things. Uh, we've got an apostle in South Africa that listens to our videos. Uh, he does 
comments on videos and he's touched uh, so other people will give you feedback uh, there's many ways uh, to know and and uh, be uh, benefited uh, by following me apart from the fact that uh, you're becoming like me you're becoming more and more like me um, and um, Matthew got a prophecy uh, the other day that says your love flows deep like a river um, and uh, Satan likes to uh, pick opportunities and pick things that Matthew said or did and poke fun at them and say you're not really like Jesus and then he gets a prophecy that says your love runs deep like a river so uh, will, will you believe uh, me when when I say to him does he believe me or when I say to him that I'm proud of him or does he believe the enemy when the enemy says you didn't treat that person nice enough? So um, I will uh, I, I will speak to you um, and I'll give you assurance. I'll give you peace. I'll give you presence. I'll take you out of worry and fear. And um, when the coronavirus came out, Matthew just simply said, I'm not getting that. And he hasn't got that. Um People ask him if he's going to have the flu shot. And he says, I've never got the flu before. Uh, I don't get the flu. Uh, so he speaks his life uh, and speaks his action. He, Matthew's not a name and an it person. Uh, he's not from the word of faith uh, movement. Uh, but he also knows his power in his words. Uh, so following me will bring you great joy, personal peace and satisfaction. Thank you, Jesus. And I can testify to, to that because following you, doing all of these um, interviews, speaking with the saints in heaven has brought me so much joy. And before, I'm a very anxious person. Like, if things doesn't go the way I envisage, I start worrying. But I've, I've noticed that I don't worry about things anymore. I'm learning to let go of things and just allowing God to take control. So I guess that's as a result of following you and trying to build a close relationship with you. So that's what I've got to add to that um, response, Jesus. My so, next so question... if, you get, if, if you get busy following me and if each day you're being led by the Holy Spirit, anxiety and fear don't, don't get a foothold in your life because you're so busy doing the things of God. You're so centered on me. Um Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. That's so true. When you have your eyes on me and you're following my will, the worries and the cares and the frustrations of the world will dissipate. I agree. Thank you, Jesus. And my next question is, what are the costs of sacrifices involved in following you? Uh, so you can uh, be rejected uh, once you uh, start serving me fully. Uh, that uh, that may cause rejection. Uh, you may have uh, time for your friends and uh, time to go out and go to lunch and stuff. Uh, you may uh, get so busy following me that you don't have time for your friends. Uh, and they may reject you because of that. They may be upset with you because of that. You may be getting a revelation uh, from the Holy Spirit about scriptures in the Bible. And if you share those revelations with other scriptures, uh, other, other, other people, they may reject you because your revelation uh, is different to what they believe of that scripture. Uh, so you may get rejection. People may disclude you. People may call you weird. Uh, people may make judgments against you. Um, you may uh, have less time to uh, indulge in uh, watching Netflix and uh, going to the movies and going out to restaurants. You may be so busy uh, doing the things of the Lord that the things that you used to do for relaxation, you're not doing anymore. You haven't got the time for them. You haven't got the inclination, uh, Tulu. I was sharing with Matthew uh, yesterday that uh, she tried to watch Netflix and she could only watch five minutes before she re returned back to watching a repeat of one of our videos uh, because she's just 
simply bored with Netflix. She's lost her interest in the things of the world, and that will happen. Um, you'll you'll become uh, sometimes uh, lonely uh, because uh, you're the only one who feels uh, the way you do. Um, you you may uh, become depressed with the state of the world as you get more insight. Uh, into what's really happening and uh, the state of the church. And when you find out that uh, church leaders are blind and the church just basically teaches religion, uh, you won't have the inclination uh, to go to a religious church and you'll be upset uh, that the body of Christ or the church aren't doing uh, the will of God. You you may uh, become uh, disaffected and and uh, distance from church and religion. Uh, you you may uh, become more specific and uh, more picky when it comes to what sort of videos you watch. Um, your whole life uh, will be transformed uh, by drawing close to me and doing my will. Thank you, Jesus. It's so interesting you used that example, Jesus, yesterday because I was so frustrated with myself because I just wanted to watch something different from watching the saints or listening to the interview just to have a bit of fun by struggle with uh, there was no interest i did not want to watch it at all i tried a few times then i had to give up and then just come back to the channel you know, to continue watching the youtube um, channel but i guess the more you get closer to god the more you're no longer interested in things that probably you find joy join him before and you did mention as well that we may not have friends and we might be lonely that's something that i can relate to because i don't have much friends and i don't like to spend my time with friends as well because it's something i do intentionally as well as much as people might have rejected me in the past but i just don't want to waste my time on things that are not fruitful and my time is limited these days so i want to use my time just doing things that will bring glory to God's name. So thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus, for explaining that better. Oh, my next question is, can anyone follow you or are there specific qualifications? Uh, no, anyone uh, can follow me. Uh, even even uh, Matthew has found recently a couple of girls uh, involved in witchcraft have uh, decided to come and investigate uh, the Christian faith, but uh, some people, some people like uh, Buddhists, uh, for instance, uh, they follow uh, the teachings of Buddha, but uh, many of the teachings of Buddha are the same and really aligned uh, with what I taught. So there's many people in the world who are essentially uh, following me and following what I taught indirectly and without uh, their knowledge so they're just uh, guided by the conscience they make decisions based on the conscience and it says in scripture that i'll write the law on their hearts and uh, my law is written on their hearts and they just obey my their conscience and i uh, say so they're obeying me but there's no a uh, real hoop uh, to jump over, there's no uh, huge qualification uh, to become a follower of mine, but it is costly. Um, mm -hmm. I say very clearly uh, in the gospel, narrow is the gate that leads to life and few find it, but broad is the way that uh, leads uh, to uh, destruction. Uh, narrow and difficult is the gate that leads to life. Um, so it is... Uh, it is one thing to call yourself a Christian and there's like over a billion Christians in the world, people that profess to be a Christian, but it is a whole lot more difficult uh, to be led by the spirit and uh, to take every thought captive based on scripture and to live a holy and sanctified and righteous life. It's harder to do that. It's harder to truly follow me and lay down your life and, uh, crucify yourself and die daily uh, to uh, doing my will and doing the Holy Spirit's will. When you're doing the Holy Spirit's will, you're following me. Um, just mm -hmm. like when I came to earth, uh, I wasn't anyone powerful. I just 
followed the Holy Spirit's direction and the Holy Spirit gave me the enablement and gave me the power to do my miracles and all praise uh, to the Holy Spirit for his role in my life. And you can get to know my commandments and be enabled by the Holy Spirit to obey them and the Holy Spirit can give you the power and the anointing to obey my uh, directions and he can uh, give you the enablement to follow his directions and if you're following my teachings the teachings of the apostles and uh, if you're following my uh, parables uh, then um, and you're following uh, the directions of the Holy Spirit each day you'll be living this really radical uh, supernatural life and you'll be part of the one or two percent who are truly uh, following me in every way. So um, I encourage you uh, to uh, do your best uh, to read uh, this whole book. Uh, I encourage you to uh, read the book uh, produced in 2024, um, uh, The uh, Parables of Jesus Made Simple by Tolu Johnson and Matthew Robert Payne. Um, and I encourage you uh, to learn how to take every thought captive according to scripture and transform your life. Thank you, Jesus. It's quite interesting, Jesus, the way you answer that question that even people that are following other religion, unconsciously they are doing your will because the former me will say, yes, there needs to be qualification and the qualification is you need to be born again. And I guess that's what people look at when they follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. You have to live your whole ways of life. You have to accept Jesus Christ into your life. Then you started following him. So it's very, very interesting the way you've answered that question that the Christians are not necessarily following you. And sometimes even people that we point fingers to, the home believers are indirectly following you without knowing. Yeah, That's one of my, one of my parables I share is the sheep and the goats parable, and um, I say I was hungry, I was thirsty, and uh, I was hungry, and you you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was homeless, and you took me into your house. I was in prison, and you visited me. I was in hospital, I was sick, and you came and visited me. And I say, when did we do that, Jesus? And Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I said in a parable, what you did to the least of my brethren, you did unto me. If there's people in other faiths that are doing that, mm. that are expressing love, and, and you remember in 1 John it says uh, God is love. If If there's people who are doing that, who are living loving lives, if I died on the cross for the sins of mankind, do you honestly think, a one paragraph sinner's prayer is what separates them from heaven. Do you honestly believe in you must be born again? Um, the scripture says, unless you're born again, you shall not see the kingdom of God. What if the kingdom of God, seeing the kingdom of God, is having two-way conversations with, mm -hmm. with the Trinity, being intimate with the Trinity, uh, meeting angels and being directed and co-laboring with angels? meeting saints in heaven and going to heaven uh, and seeing heaven in visions. What if that's the kingdom of God? What if 99% of Christians haven't entered the kingdom of God? What if that's born again? And what if born again isn't a one paragraph sinner's prayer that's been instituted in the last 50 years? What if being a born again is, is deciding that uh, Jesus was the son of God and he died for your sins. What if that's enough? What if, what if, uh, what if uh, following uh, the sheep and the gates parable um, and uh, being kind and loving, what if that's enough? What if you know everything you're meant to be doing and you don't do it? What if that mm. takes you to hell? Mm. Thank you, Jesus. So my next question is, are there specific actions or behaviors that characterize those who follow you? Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, I've uh, mentioned that before, so we won't have a long answer here. Uh, the actions that uh, you need to be taking as a Christian who's following me is 
becoming like me, being me. If you follow me, you've got to follow in my footsteps. Um, I said no one is greater than the master, but uh, if they do a good job, they'll become like their master. So it's important that you become like me. And the way you become like me is, uh, is I manifest my character in your life and I, I put my mind in your mind. And the way that you accomplish that is to understand my 50 commandments, to walk in my 50 commandments, to understand my 54 parables, to walk in those parables, to understand the commandments that the apostles make uh, in uh, their epistles and uh, to do them. And uh, it's a lot of work. It'll take you years to develop the character, but uh, someone uh, may take uh, 15 or 18 years to become a tennis champion to win Wimbledon. You can afford to invest a few years into becoming like me. Thank you, Jesus. And how does following you impact relationships with others, both within and outside the faith community? So uh, Matthew was uh, walking past uh, a neighbor's house uh, um, a few years ago. The neighbor's passed on and he's in heaven now, but uh, he was walking past the neighbor's house and had a conversation with the neighbor and the neighbor said, do you know, Matthew, you're the nicest person I've ever met in my life. Um, and mm. uh, and another uh, person, Matthew has three carers that come and see him and another person um, who who's one of his carers said that Tuesday is their favourite day, the day that they spend time with uh, Matthew. And uh, Matthew uh, really becomes dearly beloved uh, in other people's lives. And each of these three people believe in Jesus. They believe Jesus died for their sins. They try their best to, to do uh, the things uh, that I taught in the Bible. Um, they pray every night. They pray to God. According to me, they're Christians, but they mm. just refuse to attend church. So, um, so you may not need to witness as much as you think you need to witness. Uh, what I've called you to do is is to uh, lead people to me and teach them the commandments and teach them uh, what I taught and uh, and so. Uh, following me will make you into a beautiful person. Matthew's uh, got a book uh, called Influencing Your World for Christ. And it's a book on how to live your life in such a way that you become a living witness to other people. Uh, if you order that book on Amazon, uh, you'll find that book is very instructional. And it's a series of five books on uh, witnessing in a series uh, on that book page of that book. I encourage you uh, to get those five books and put them into practice so you can have a good influence on other people that you meet. Thank you, Jesus. And second to the last question is, what encouragement or advice do you offer to those who desire to follow you but find it difficult or daunting? Uh, so uh, the Apostle John said, Nine times in his writings, if you love Jesus, obey his commands. And uh, the Apostle John said his commands aren't burdensome. And uh, so the premise of, of your question uh, there is a bit faulty, uh, hard or daunting. Um, the Apostle John says that uh, to follow the commands of Jesus is not burdensome. Uh, so... It may be hard on the flesh. Paul talks in Galatians about the flesh not wanting to do what the Holy Spirit says. And Paul said earlier in, in Romans that um, the things I want to do, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I do. And uh, the Spirit uh, battles with the flesh, and the flesh battles with the Spirit. So some things of the Spirit are hard to do. And... Uh, 
you'll just get better and you just got to uh, take each step at a time. Uh, doing your first drop shot in tennis or doing um, doing any shot in tennis may be hard until you've practiced and practiced. Uh, turning the other cheek will be hard for you if you got to start to learn how to do that. Uh, praying for your enemies, uh, there needs to be a whole book on how to pray for your enemies because most people who pray for their enemies pray witchcraft prayers. They pray prayers that are similar to witchcraft. Um, not many people understand how to pray for their enemies. Not many people understand these commandments and how to uh, practice these commandments. And that's the reason for this book. But Matthew's already written two books on the commandments of Jesus, my commandments. And uh, this is his third edition uh, because they're so integral and they're so important. So I encourage uh, people uh, to get a Matthew's recent book of the parables of Jesus made simple that's written with Tulu Johnson and uh, uh, Tulu Sarah Johnson. Uh, you can uh, look that up on Amazon and uh, I, I encourage people to continue to read this book and uh, put uh, these uh, teachings into practice. Thank you, Jesus. And my last question is, how can this be applicable, these commandments, to those listening in heaven now? Uh, so uh, there, uh, there, there's flesh in heaven and uh, there's uh, certain uh, things that people uh, don't uh, do in heaven. And uh, as uh, you're hearing these commandments and as you're hearing this uh, teaching, uh, take each thing uh, in on board and uh, get the book uh, when it comes out and read the book and study the book and uh, put uh, the book into practice. Thank you, Jesus. And that's my last question. Okay, so if you listen to this video, to this stage, please like the video. Uh, if you've got a comment and uh, you listen to my videos, uh, please uh, make a comment. Uh, if this is the first video you've seen of me, this is part of a playlist called The Commandments of Jesus, and the playlist is listed on the right of uh, the heading uh, for, for this uh, uh, commandment. Uh, you can click on the playlist and watch the whole 50 commandments. I, I encourage you to invest your time uh, in uh, listening and uh, wait for the book in, in uh, six weeks' time and uh, and uh, put them into practice uh, in your life. Um, if uh, you're not following my channel, I encourage you to follow my channel and God bless you and keep you and keep you out of trouble. <laughs>